to that. I just up shortly, maybe today. Um, okay, so okay, so let's let's review. Um, okay, so we, we picked another geometry theorem. The, the, the one of the most fundamental, in fact, um, probably just about everybody you uh, you can ask uh, will know this. Okay, so it's uh, more famous than Pythagorean theorem, probably in, in mathematics. It's it's the the most uh, popular theorem. Everybody knows the answer, I think. Well, if any if a person knows anything about mathematics, that that is the one uh, that comes to mind, especially from geometry. Okay, so so we did some analysis. Uh, the idea was to shift the uh, the triangle, and then uh, and then it seemed to work out. But we realized that we need uh, these two lemmas. Okay, so in a parallelogram, I mean, if you want to be te go technical, you have you still have to provide a definition of parallelogram here. Um, uh, the opposite sides have equal, equal length, and if a triangle has sides equal pairwise, that's one of those uh, uh, solving uh, um, uh, solving uh, triangles uh, theorems. Okay, so so at this at this point, uh, we are moving on to the uh, to actual proof uh, based on that, these ideas and these two lemmas. Okay, so so that's that's uh, works out fine. I want to point out again at the lemmas and the point why we may make it. Uh, we want to make uh, our statements, we, we want to uh, uh, statements e encapsulate them as much as possible and separate from each other. So that uh, gives some structure to the proof. Okay? And furthermore, uh, the also when you actually do that, uh, you might actually decide not to provide a proof for it. Okay? So, uh, which might be a mistake, but at least nobody will, reading your proof, will not tell you, well, you, you, you what is starting to pull here. That is supposed to be proven, and he's just skipping over it. That's maybe he's he's not, doesn't know what he's talking about, or something like that. If you put it uh, that statement you, that you did not did not prove in the form of a lemma, at least everybody knows that it is your conscious decision not to prove it. Okay, so at least you're not trying to to be fast here. Uh, you, you you really decide that uh, uh, well, it's just so elementary. Even though if you think about it, we're proving one of the most elementary theorems in. In, uh, um, in, in in the whole geometry, and uh, so so then uh, you know there there is this uh, uh, every every theory develops in a linear fashion, and uh, and so relying uh, every next statement relies on the previous. So so it means that um, you can only hope, and that that's that's the big point here. You can only hope that neither one of these you you, you can imagine what can happen. You you trying to, you don't decide not to prove these lemmas, okay? And then what what you might discover, and then you, you decide to prove them, and then what you what you might discover? <coughs> no, they they are they no you you so you better know that they are right. If you decide to skip the proof, at least you should be very sure that it is correct. But you write a proof, and then what you might discover. Like I said, this is the very top, the one we're trying to prove is a very fundamental and very appears very early in the proof, in, in the, in the uh, uh, theory of geometry, okay? So it might happen if you skip those lemmas, you might discover that when you're writing those proofs, those proofs rely on this theory. You see a problem? So, so you have to be careful. Uh, so, um, the sum of the uh, of the angle is, is 180 degrees, and uh, you just just hope that it doesn't matter. Um, and um, um, and you know that that is a big 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 one. Uh, certainly, it is. In a, if you take any class, it is still can happen because because of the um, um, just of the way things develop, and you you have to skip over things and. Uh, uh, so you still do that, uh, but uh, if you look at uh, so that's that's uh, mathematics as a class. It's one thing, of course, mathematics course. It's one thing. Mathematics is science, a body of knowledge that that these things are not allowed. So you have to have developed uh, linearly, and everything that you state has to be proven based on things that you stated previously. Okay, so uh, and then the only that way you ensure that you everything uh, develops logically, and you don't make uh, circles. So circular logic is, is a very uh, dangerous. Uh, okay, 
but it might happen in a, in a mathematics class just because ideas kind of uh, develop at random sometimes. Okay, so so anyway, uh, we we're not going to be concerned with this excessively. Uh, we'll just uh, uh, try to uh, be careful. At least we'll state. At least if there is a problem, we know where it might appear uh, here. So so what if we try to prove this theorem? Uh, take it as a homework, uh, as an exercise uh, uh, that uh, prove that parallelogram is uh, opposite sides are equal to to, to have an equal length. Uh, and then you're supposed to prove it without relying on the on this theorem we're working on. The same with lemma two. Okay, so okay, so we are in the middle of the proof. We have these ideas. We have two lemmas. Okay, so um, um, as you can see, I, I actually had to use the Euclid's axiom uh, here in order to uh, develop our construction. I'm trying to construct what amounts to uh, this second triangle. See over there, upside down. Our triangle upside down. Okay, so uh, so and I do it in a, in a manner that uh, may make specific uh, reference to specific construction rather than such a fairly informal idea idea of, of shifting a triangle turning upside down. No, I have a, there's a point, there is a uh, there is a line. Okay, I can actually be at here. Uh, C does not belong to to uh, A B. Naturally, it's a triangle. C does not belong to AB. That is why Euclid's axiom apply one of one of them, and that's why there is a, a, a line parallel to AB through uh, through C. Okay, so uh, all right. And then I apply that axiom again uh, with the other line, uh, a C and and B. Okay, so that's the green one. That there is a green one. There is a red one. Okay, so I plotted them. In fact, I could. Probably, so that's, that's what it looks like. That's my L. Uh, this is my M. Okay, I can actually m could make my point here that uh, to emphasize on the picture, once again, easier for the reader to understand what's going on and the logic that I, I have, and I, I just point out which one is a parallel. Okay. Uh, now, what's the next step? Can you show the triangle formed by Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, uh, we, what, what we're skipping over is is actually uh, that, that 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 we are building a new vertex. This, this, this is the step that we actually want to do. Uh, we want to have uh, a point there. Okay, so uh, once again, you want to do it carefully, and uh, by carefully, I mean uh, you're supposed to, um, well, if you want to, you, uh, you want to just go ahead and say, let P be the intersection of the two, uh, of these two lines. Okay, and, and, and then go on. Uh, but if you want to be careful, and you, you have to sometimes, this is in mathematics, so you, you have to be really hard ass sometimes, uh, and pedantic, uh, especially hard on yourself, uh, and, and that is so, so every logical conclusion that you make. So, for example, I want to say let P be the intersection of, of uh, M and, uh, L and M, right? I want to say that, but... If you want to really be hard on yourself, what you would, uh, what's missing? So there are two lines, and I say let P be their intersection. That, that's that's right. That's exactly exactly what you should be uh, not not concerned about. But uh, if you want to be um, really careful, you want to state and and say that. I mean, you just not cannot declare an intersection when you are not sure that the, there is an intersection. Okay, so that that's a very dangerous uh, mistake to make. If uh, just like remember in calculus, you declare let let l be the limit of this function. Well, great, maybe there is no, and then you start doing algebra with that limit. And then you, 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 after a while, you realize maybe there, there's no limit. Okay, so say so same thing here. You're doing construction with a point that might not even exist. But fortunately, it does. Why? Well, uh, how would you say? Uh, I would put it this way: A, B, and A, C are not parallel. 
so L and M are not parallel. Then, once another Euclid's axiom, they intersect. In fact, you can also, if you want to be really careful, then there is only one intersection. So, so that you won't make a mistake when you declare P be the, the intersection, why there's only one. Well, once again, that, that's, that's uh, all the way goes 2,000 years back, <coughs> being careful about all of these things, that the intersection, there, there, there is intersection, and there's only one intersection, things like that. Okay, anyway, but now we are okay, so P is the point that is the intersection of these two lines, uh, which means that we have formed a, a triangle. Uh, so, um, okay, then, uh, then, okay, so triangle, what can, uh, uh, triangle uh, CBP, CBP, that's the new triangle that we have built, what we want to say about it? That's right. Uh, then uh, CBP. BP is congruent, congruent to uh, ABC. Justified by side, side, side. what? Uh, three sides, uh, or three congruent sides of the data. Right. Well, we we actually s purposefully stated that as a lemma too, so so we can make a reference not to some page 367 in some other uh, book, but right here it's, uh, it's for the reader, convenience of the reader. So, by lemma two. Okay, so, um, uh, and the congruence uh, is, uh, is, by the way, it's not just a, um, a, a random one, but rather, um, um, uh, so the equal, par e equal, equal parts will bind an equal angle. Right, so so uh, let, let me mark then the the, uh, uh, the triangles. I probably should copy this. Um, so I take this once again for the sake of uh, where's copy? Copy. Okay. Uh, once again, for the uh, for the reader's sake, I will I will make a a copy. Uh, I will make a picture uh, uh, which is not overburdened with the, all these uh, uh, constructions. So, uh, and paste. Okay, so, all right, so I'm concentrating on my new, uh, new triangle. Okay, so these are all irrelevant now. We have, once you have written it, you, you don't, don't have to worry about, uh, about it anymore. So I'll erase this, um, and that, like this. And I don't even need, need to name these anymore. Okay, so uh, that's my triangle, so let's get rid of this, okay. Uh, I have uh, so this one side, the other side. So what I do, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, point out now the angles. I wanna I wanna have the three angles of uh, of ABC triangle ABC. I wanna mark the uh, triangles um, on the on the, in the new triangle in the new triangle uh, uh, with the same markings. Okay. So and as I said, pairwise. Well, let let me mark. So red ones are equal to each other, right? Red ones are equal to each other. Okay, the green ones are equal to each other. Okay, we, I mark the green one like this. So it's for our sake, so, so we can, it's easier for us to, to think. And the blue one is in the middle, so it's the same. Okay, so uh, let's see. Um, so I'll start with, I'll start with CBP. CBP. It is equal to what angle? It, it is the angle, the CBP is bounded by blue and, and green, right? Blue and green, so it is, what's, what's this angle? Green and blue, so it is uh, ACB, right? Okay, so, so I, I mark tr triple here, okay? Then uh, I will let me take uh, CPB, CPB. Okay, so it's bounded by green and uh, uh, red, so it will be same as uh, CAB. This one, and then what's left is the uh, this one. So 
finally uh, a uh, what is it a B or P P C B is same as uh, A B C okay so uh, okay so we are building remember our uh, vertex C is the one of our interest we want to build a full a full uh, turn around uh, point C so what I'm gonna this I probably didn't have to erase. Uh, uh, you, you see what remains uh, remains to be done. It is uh, I need to uh, what's the, there's a missing angle, right? So I already have uh, the, this is the full full turn angle uh, around C, okay? And I have already two uh, angles identified uh, identified there, and then the third is supposed to be uh, what? The uh, uh, the, the single line, right? So. So th this is still still to be demonstrated. So uh, um, uh, how should I call it? So so then let, let me uh, uh, I'll put it, put it this way. Um, the uh, next 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 uh, the angle between uh, what is it? A C and CP is equal to uh, equal to as we uh, pointed out CAB okay so um, because so that would be pretty much the last thing that we need so why these two are equal to each other the single mark, marked angle. Let me plot it, what I'm talking about here. So, that, well, let me, let me plot what actually matters. So, A and C. Well, no, that way, that's what you're trying to prove. Right, so. Um, Okay, and we are trying to show that these two are angles are the same. Same. Because, because what? Uh, be, be, no, they are parallel, but, but the, the two red lines are parallel, right? And so that is another, uh, that is another uh, Euclid's axiom. Uh, so since the lines are parallel and, and those lines are parallel and they intersect at like the same points and you just say the angles are the same too, is that what you Right, so the two parallel lines cut out the same angles from, from a straight line. Yeah. Uh, I do believe it is another axiom of, of Euclid's. So uh, because, uh, uh, a, because uh, this one is L, okay, because L is parallel, was chosen to be uh, to uh, a, B. Okay, so this is once again, this is A, B. And L was chosen to be parallel to, uh, to A, B by construction. And so they, uh, actually, it is, it is actually the definition. Uh, I, I don't have uh, Euclid right, right, right in front of me. And as a matter of fact, you, your textbook, I realize, doesn't have any geometry in it. If I'm not mistaken, but maybe that might be one of the reasons because there's just so many, many things to list. Uh, but uh, it is interesting that um, I do believe it is actually the definition of a parallel line. So well, what, what does make two lines parallel? Uh, not, not the, it is not a theorem. It is, uh, in fact, uh, the meaning of the, of the two parallel lines be, uh, two lines being parallel. And they are cut out the same line um, um, uh, from uh, another, another uh, line that they intersect. So I don't I don't remember the exact order of things, but you do remember the fifth a, fifth axiom of, of Euclid's or postulate rather the way he put it. Uh, the, the the parallel lines don't intersect. That's the fifth one. Remember, parallel lines don't intersect. Sounds familiar? Yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. Uh, yeah. And so, so you're gonna you, you certainly use it. Uh, and uh, uh, and we, we did. Did we use it implicitly somewhere? That, that's an interesting question to to, to ask uh, once you write a, write a proof. 
uh, what you what things you rely on and what, what things are not as important. Uh, um, I don't think so, um, but you, you, it is it is you know um, um, you can be sure. It is really. I mean, it took took them two thousand years to sort it out, or not two thousand, but maybe eighteen hundred. Um, so. Uh, to sort it out, to, 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 to demonstrate that the fifth axiom is independent from the rest of the axioms. Remember that story? Uh, it's, a, it's a good story. <laughs> uh, obviously. And, um, okay. Uh, okay, I, ca I have a couple of more uh, theorems uh, from geometry. Uh, hopefully they're simpler. Uh, okay, so one... Um, So another theorem, an isosceles triangle what's called isosceles? As isosceles? Two sides, two sides are the same, yes, okay, two sides are the same, you can, two sides are equal. Uh, so what uh, what else two sides are equal what else do you know about these triangles they have two equal yeah have two equal yes uh, equal uh, angles uh, yeah opposite to those sides that's probably a good way to describe it Maybe like this. It's a little bit informal, but that that, that will do. So into So uh, uh, the first parenthesis to, to just to provide you with the definition of isosceles, in case you don't remember. And the uh, but the second one, more important, just to 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 point out exactly which angles are equal, even though it's probably it's uh, unambiguous otherwise. But it's better to just to be specific if you are proving it anyway. Okay. So uh, okay. So once again, I state the theorem uh, in a. If I want to prove it, I want to translate words into, into letters. I uh, was starting with a picture. So I have my triangle. Hmm. Looks equilateral. So we don't want an equilateral if it's not. Okay. Uh, a, B, C. Okay. Two sides are equal. Okay. So given a triangle, A, B, C with sides. A B equal to B C. Uh, then, well, it's a bit awkward. Uh, C A B angle equal to A C B. Okay, so I think we can just uh, at least outline the proof quickly. Uh, if you might maybe have an idea how you prove it. So this is what we're supposed to demonstrate here, that these two angles are equal. Say again? Is it like one of the side side, like um, you, you mean the, once again, the um, uh, congruency of, of triangles? Okay, so congruency, that's, that's a good idea, except we only have only one triangle. Split it into two triangles. Let's, let's split it. Okay, so let's split it. How exactly do you want to split it? Two right triangles? Yeah. Well, you can mm -hmm. Two right triangles. Just okay. Uh, well, that, that's a good question. So there are three ways to split. There is a, either uh, it is a height, then it's the right triangles. It is a median, which is cut in half. Or the third one, when you cut it in the angle in half, by sectrix. Okay, so so which one do we, <laughs> which one do we pick? What? Which is a uh, right triangle? Okay. Right triangle. So, okay. So uh, I'm constructing this straight angle. Pythagoras 
So these two are equal, okay? What else? So two and these are equal to. Okay, so which which theorem you, you want to use? You want to prove that these two triangles are congruent, and uh, so okay. So what do you? Which theorem do you use? When we split that uh, triangle that's the midpoint, would you say the bottom is equal? Well, ho ho hold on. Do we mid, do, doing midpoint or are we doing a uh, height? Well, that, that height splits that model. Well, right. that you have to prove that. That, so maybe we'll start with the median. Because right, right now, we, we don't have a theorem to apply, right? At this moment, there is no theorem to be applied because as you can see, uh, all we have is one, uh, two sides are equal, right? So one is shared, two sides are opposite, but unfortunately, the angle is not between those two sides. So there is no theorem like that, unfortunately. So uh, that, that doesn't work out. So that, if you start with the height, so far, it doesn't really work out. Uh, so the suggestion is to cut it in half the, the median, so like this. So cut the bottom in half, so median. Okay, so then we have these two are th still equal. These, this, is, this is shared, and these are equal. Okay, so uh, that seems to work out, right? So because uh, uh, three sides are equal, so they are congruent. So. So uh, all three sides, because we choose the median, so the, uh, the opposite side is cut in half, which means that, that these two sides are also equal. And we have a theorem for that. Uh, okay, so let me just say it. Um, so, uh, so choose, I suppose, if you want to put it in words, well, let's put it quickly in words. Uh, this is ABC. Choose P in the middle, in the middle, of side uh, AC, okay, uh, then, then the triangles uh, ABP and uh, PBC have equal sides, all sides, so by, you can by theorem, you can say, or you could want to state a lemma specifically here. Uh, it's up to you. So once again, we're skipping over it, but at least we're aware of it. Uh, the, the triangles are congruent. Okay, well, then exactly what we want to have, CAB is equal to uh, ACB. Okay, so that ends the proof. Okay. Uh, incidentally, so the height that that was, I was wondering about uh, to, to myself. I just uh, so the the main, two main th three theorems we quoted last time about uh, congruent triangles and those who are all sides are equal. Okay, uh, side and two angles, and uh, two sides and an angle. Uh, so sides and uh, I'm sorry, uh, two sides and angle between them, or two sides and two adjacent angles. Okay. Uh, uh, and then we, it did not seemingly work out with the other one because we had two sides, uh, the, the first one, the first try, uh, which we discard, uh, now we discard it, um, the, um, uh, because there they were two sides and the angle that we knew were, were equal were not, was not between them. Uh, I cannot remember, anybody remembers, uh, is there a theorem like that? or that? Or maybe there isn't. If we take it, you just take a minute and think about it. I do not recollect. So, what do you think? What do you think? Is this theorem true? Uh, okay. Let me let me state it or hypothesis or conjecture. So, uh, uh, so two triangles um, um, two sides two pairs of sides are equal and any angle also equal I'm not re really writing a theorem just yet uh, uh, then 
the two triangles are congruent. Okay, so in other words, uh, this is equal to that. These are equal to, but the angle, the angle is, let's say, this one. So a two angles are not, are they have to be parallel? Pairwise, the, the way I marked it. So I didn't really state the theorem yet, but the way I marked it, you can see that uh, uh, what's what's happening here. So what? Not true. Not true? Okay, maybe it's not. So how, how, do, how would you demonstrate that it's not true? Well, well let's let think about it. How would we disprove things? What? No, 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 the proving the opposite or disproving something is not the same thing. Um, Well, anyway, can can if you have a construction in mind, just give it to me, or I mean, it, for, forget about logic for a moment. If you just think like uh, like geometer, uh, rather than logician. Well, if, uh, yeah. If any angle is equal, would the triangle have to be equal? Logic? No, there is only uh, no. Is it equal one or is that any? There is only one angle. Uh, to uh, uh, one angle that we can we can. Oh, I thought it was an any angle. Uh, it'd be, be any any angle meaning not necessarily the one between those two sides. If it is, then we know that we have, there is a theorem. If that angle is between them, like this one, then, then we have a theorem. So let's suppose it's not the, uh, the, the angle that is shared by the two sides that are equal. Okay, so we have green and red, uh, and the green and red, there is an angle between them. So, and the green is equal to green, the red to red, but the angle between them might not be equal. So, okay. But we don't know anything about the bottom side. Well, I mean, there are no restrictions on the bottom side. Right. Um, they're not necessarily congruent. Is what I'm saying. Okay. So let's. Okay. So. Um, it's the red and green angle. So I have a red here. The angle here is fixed, right? So this angle is fixed, and so the, what remains is to attach the green line in such a way, in two different ways. So you can see it, right? So I can do it. Well, let me do it twice. So over here, so I start building two triangles, and the end result will be different. So the same angle with that line, uh, that these two sides are the same under the same, that angle, but I can uh, the the uh, green uh, line might look different, like for example, like this, versus like that, right? So once again, so the, it's, it has the same angle, same angle, but just pointing in the ups, on the opposite side of that of that height. Okay, so um, so what does this picture tell you? The, the conjecture is false. Uh, the, yes, it does. Can you be more 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 specific? Uh, lo, lo, can you logically explain what we did it? We, we did it before. It is counterexample. Okay, so this is. Uh, so all you need to disprove something uh, is just provide a, one single example that does not satisfy the conditions of the theorem. So, uh, so this is a counterexample. Okay, then indeed we have uh, the, all the conditions are satisfied, sides, angle, and all, all that, and then, uh, but they are not congruent. So, one example, you, you, could, you can it, make, make these a specific, you can make these specific. This is very general because you can have a bunch of examples, but all you need is one. So you, have, you can actually uh, build a, a, well, in a sense I did, right? Uh, it is a specific triangle, uh, spe two specific triangles that are not congruent and yet they have these, these conditions are, are, um, are satisfied. Anyway, so as you can see, so it was crucial for us to uh, discard, uh, to discard this. So let me discard this. Oops, this one, no, this one. Okay, so I'm discarding this as, as a, a dead end, right? I'm discarding it because that didn't work out. So you don't know ahead of time. 
So the construction works, but the, the proof does not, unless you do some more business. Uh, incidentally, there is, a, uh, there, remember that there is a third option. There is a third option. What's the third option? Cut in half the angle. If I cut uh, the angle in half, what would, what would happen? So once again, I I'm taking the same thing, same uh, triangle, but this time I'm not cutting the opposite side in half. I, I'm cutting the angle, oops, uh, the angle in half, like this. Okay, so these are equal. This is shared. Okay, what's the conclusion? They're congruent. They're congruent. So, so it still works out. So the, this is a, an alternative option. So let me say it's homework. You can work, work this out on a similar fashion. Uh, so it's a different choice, different construction proves the same thing. So once again, two congruent triangles, uh, but a different, you rely on a different lemma. So this lemma will be, would be different. Okay. Uh, one more. One more. Uh, okay. Well, that that you might not remember. Maybe you do. So, this is my center uh, a circle. And I'm building a triangle on its diameter. And the other side is on the on the circle. Okay. Any recollections about the, the triangle? No. No, you could you could actually you know you can you can try to do this. Uh, well, actually, it's not isosceles. You can, you can. How do you prove that it's not a isosceles? You compare in diameter with the uh, with something that is not a diameter. Uh, I'm not sure if that would require extra proof, but but really, it is. Uh, it is. Uh, it will be shorter, definitely. A anything other than diameter will be shorter than the diameter inside of the circle. So, uh, anybody remembers anything special about it? Uh, actually, the angle is, is is nine degrees over here. No, no, there is nothing, nothing equal. Just the, the it is a right triangle. As the as the point, uh, the, 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 you keep the diameter and slide that point. Every single time, the angle will be nine degrees. Okay, so um, well. Maybe we'll just uh, uh, let me get it started for you, and then we'll, we'll just just a uh, homework exercise. Um, okay, so um, uh, well, let's state it. Let's state it. So theorem. So suppose um, suppose one side of a triangle is the diameter. Uh, a diameter of a, of a circle with the opposite vertex. <coughs> on the on the circle, lying on the circle, then the angle of this vertex is ninety degrees. So that, that's that's what, what we're saying, and you need to prove for, uh, what it is. Um, so one, once again, you could you could restate it in in terms of uh, in terms of um, um, well, I I don't want to move on uh, and and leave it as a homework. Uh, just it's it, it's not supposed to be hard, uh, but uh, if uh, especially if we just quickly come up with the idea how to prove. It. So what's the idea of, of, of such a proof, you think? Well, there might be several, but well, let, let me start with a picture here. This is R, and this is R, and this is R. OK. 
So look, look carefully at those uh, at those triangles. The isosceles, yes, isosceles. Okay, you have two isosceles, and so the the the, the angle attached to uh, adjacent to the base, the opposite side to the, those two blue sides, uh, they have equal equal angles, and that that's pr almost uh, all. So so the idea is uh, observe that these isosceles, and then you use uh, a last theorem. Okay, so we can talk about it a bit. Uh, more uh, about that tomorrow or uh, whatever next week uh, but uh, I just want to uh, move on and just give you some some uh, thing to th th things to think about and move on to uh, to back to numbers so back to number theory okay I will as promised just a minute ago I promised to state the uh, uh, a fundamental theorem of arithmetic, which I did not, I missed the one one caveat there. Uh, okay, so, um, uh, okay, so so uh, fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Okay, so it's about factoring integers. So any integer. can be represented as the product of prime numbers in a unique fashion up to the order of the factors. So you can rearrange them. That certainly does not change the number. And so we cannot re require uniqueness uh, in that respect. Uh, but uh, the point being that you have a list of, uh, of, of prime factors. And uh, well, it's the same list. So if two, two is there, then you cannot come up with uh, some other factorization that does not contain two. OK? So, uh, so remember what, what, what's uh, the missing part. The missing part actually is to, to make sure that uh, we, we understand the idea of what, what a prime number is. And um, uh, so either the, the, the way out of it, uh, the way the, the problematic is, is one a prime number. So if, if one, one is, a, uh, is not a prime number, wait a minute, if one is a prime number, then the uh, factorization of a number, say 15, could be 5 times 3 times 1, or 5 times 3 times 1 times 1, or 5 times 3 times 1 times 1 times 1. OK, so, so if, if 1 is prime, OK, uh, so that ruins the uniqueness of representation. So you will just add 1 to the list, and then you can add as, as many ones as you like. So that that's, that's makes, makes the idea that 1 is prime is problematic. OK, so on the other hand, if it is not, if 1 is not prime, Prime. Then the statement of the theorem becomes incorrect because one is equal to one, and so you can it does not have prime factors. One does not have prime factors, which means that uh, uh, then um, well, first of all, I, I'm assuming that you know what uh, the meaning of a prime number, and that is that it is only divisible by one in itself. So everybody knows that, right? Okay, so so that that is the idea, and then the, you still have to ask yourself, and they ask uh, frequently, is one a prime number? So, uh, and then you certainly can, as far as at that point, you can say it doesn't matter. Uh, either one is good, and then you have to justify one, choosing one or the other way. And as you can see here, um, uh, I, I suggest that if one is prime, then our theorem does not uh, uh, stand uh, uh, as as stated. Uh, so either you have to fix the theorem at the end, uh, so then speak of uh, uh, factors uh, other than ones. Um, uh, so like you can say that uh, up to uh, order of, of factors, factors, well, excluding one, 
Okay, so that, that's one way to, to uh, resolve the issue. Or the other one, if declare one not prime, which creates other problems as well, because, because if it's not prime, then it's composite, and then it's, it's, it's once again can be, uh, can be factored. So uh, uh, what, what does the book say? Anybody has the book with you? Okay, so uh, okay, so I'll, by next time I, I, I I'll have to uh, look it up since you have official textbook, even though it's only recommended, um, and uh, that varies. Yes. If you don't count one, would that mess up other prime numbers too? Because there's like eleven. If you don't use one and eleven, then it's not a product of prime numbers. Just it's, no, it doesn't have. Yeah, that's fine. No, that's fine. If only there was only one factor, it's okay. So, uh, so the five times this, this is an okay factorization. Five times three is okay factorization. Eleven equal to eleven is okay. So once again factorization. So the question is, do we count one as a factor? And that may be something to to contemplate. That maybe it's not that it's not prime. It's just not a factor. But the theorem says represented as a product of prime numbers. It is. It can be represented. You can have as many one as as you like. But the uniqueness part, the uniqueness part depends on whether you include ones or not. Okay. So uh, we'll just uh, finish this next time.